And I'd like to thank the person of the Australian Freedom of Speech Movement for organising this rally and inviting me to speak. I know it's not an easy feat to organise a public event, so I'd just like to thank Magnus and Nathaniels by putting on such an important event in uh, here in Melbourne, what can be a hostile environment. So we are approaching a particularly disturbing time for free speech in Australia. And this is a time where we need open and honest debate about so many issues that are affecting the future of Australia. Debate is being censored both by our governments and those who hold the power to facilitate speech. You're probably all bored of hearing about the effects of 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. There was, of course, the Andrew Bolt case, the QUT students case, and, of course, the uh, persecution of uh, Bill Leake ultimately to his death. But the end result of all of these cases is that we can't have an open and honest discussion about mainly issues to do with Indigenous Australians without somebody going to the Human Rights Commission and being offended, which, as we're seeing recently, uh, we need this discussion more than ever. Probably Australia has got so many laws against free speech, but probably one that you haven't heard of is Section 474.17 of the Federal Criminal Code. It was originally used to cover phone communications, but it can now be used to uh, prosecute people who make uh, offensive comments on uh, social media. Yes, some of the language people use on Facebook discussions is a bit off, to say the least, but is it really an appropriate use of uh, police time to monitor Facebook discussions? Thankfully, the police, Australian police have not uh, prosecuted many people on these laws, but it's still not good to have such a law on the books. If I engage in a heated online discussion, does it really require a visit from a SWAT team because somebody was offended? We are holding this rally in the state of Victoria where we have another law against free speech, and that is the Racial and Religious Tolerance Act, which in effect is a blasphemy law. We saw this in action earlier this year with the uh, trial of the Bendigo Three as they were known. They were prosecuted and found guilty for conducting a mock beheading when they were protesting a mosque in Bendigo. They were actually taking a stand against beheadings, saying they did not want them here, but a court said that no, that's wrong to express that opinion. So. We are also prevented from discussing issues related to immigration in this state, especially doing it in such a colourful way. We also saw during the Marriage Law Postal Survey emergency vilification laws passed to prevent so-called hate speech during the campaign. Now there's a push to have these laws made permanent when we were told during the vote that we shouldn't worry about uh, issues such as free speech and religious freedom. Now, it may be argued that hardly anyone is actually prosecuted for, for uh, violating these laws or that frivolous uh, complaints are thrown out. But as with many other aspects of lawfare, and as uh, previous speakers have said, the process is the punishment and the stress of being publicly labelled a racist or bigot, it carries its own hardship. The, the QUT students are the perfect example. Uh, their lives were forever altered, not to mention the strain on their mental well-being. Nobody likes hate speech, but the problem with having laws against hate speech is that they are subjective. And as the above cases demonstrate, they allow the person who is most easily offended the full, full recourse of the law to silence somebody who's offended them, most of the time who is making a legitimate point. The definition of hate speech is, is constantly expanding, and it could be your speech that is next. Many have also been concerned about censorship by corporations and also social media companies. Now, this is a libertarian event, so of course private companies are free to regulate the speech that is on their platform, but it's also fair to assume that our government's presumptions against free speech help influence a culture and society against free speech. If our government and politicians believe that certain topics are off limits, then of course corporations and social media companies will ban them from being discussed. Should a person really have their communication tools taken away or be fired from their job for airing an unpopular opinion? So let's hope today's rally is just the beginning. We can write all the articles we want, vent all we want online, but it is really people on the ground 
uh, the masses who uh, politicians are afraid of. And I'm sure they see a lot more of us demanding our free speech back, then they're going to continue to pass these laws against free speech and trample on what is one of the most important freedoms in uh, not just Western civilization, but I'd say the world and in humanity. So maintain your passion after today, and most of all, don't, st don't stay silent or feel silenced. Thank you. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.